Described as the Avatar of the Light, Grandmaster Yoda is one of the wisest and most powerful force wielders the Jedi Order has ever seen. This reputation of exceptional potential carries over to many other of Yoda's species that we are introduced to over Star Wars mythos. We are introduced to very few of them, however. With only three members of his species in canon and a handful in Legends, they remain shrouded completely in mystery. One thing we do know about them is that they are incredibly strong with the Force, and have a particular affinity towards the light side. So why is this? What draws them so strongly towards the light? Welcome friends to today's video, where we will be exploring why no members of Yoda species turn to the dark side in Legends or in canon. Before we begin, if you like our content and want to know more answers to Star Wars questions like these, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to stay up to date on all things Star Wars. As stated before, we know very little about Yoda species. This was an intentional thing done by George Lucas as he wanted to keep it a secret as much as possible. In fact, when asked on numerous occasions about Yoda's origins and where he came from, George made it clear that he wanted to keep this shrouded in mystery. The current working in-universe theory for Yoda not having revealed more about his kind is that he knows that they are a peaceful people that are not equipped to handle galactic war and politics being brought to their doorstep. Something else important to note about Yoda's species, though, is that every single member that we're aware of appears to be Force-sensitive. Besides Yoda, we know of two others in canon and three others in Legends. In canon, the other members of the species is Jedi Master and former council member Yaddle, who is the first member that we'll be discussing today. In the dawning days of the Clone Wars, Master Yaddle demonstrated exceptional skill in the Force with her use of extraordinary light side abilities that rival the gratuitous powers of the dark side. One of these abilities being her power to use Morchiro, a technique which enabled the user to rapidly slow down the bodily functions of its target to the point of death. In the comic Yaddle's tale, we get a glimpse into her life as a Padawan. In 300 BBY, she and her master, Jedi Knight Paul Van Kut, were dispatched on a mission to the planet of Koba. They had been sent to deal with the rising threat of the Anvos warlord known as Tulik. However, once they got there, they were betrayed by Tulik's spies that had infiltrated the Koban residence. The Jedi were ambushed, and unfortunately, Paul Van Kut gave into the dark side as he had been tracking Tulik for the murder of his family, being overcome by fear and anger. In his wild frenzy to get to Tulik, he got slopped and was beheaded by the army. The Padawan Yaddle, however, remained cemented in the light. Yaddle was then imprisoned and subjected to various tortures to reveal when the next Jedi would come. Even under these circumstances, the Padawan held true and did not reveal anything, nor succumb to the allure of the dark side, all while growing a stronger connection to the light side despite what was being done to her in her current circumstance. If there were any time when a Jedi would have given in, it would have been here. Yaddle showed exceptional resilience while being imprisoned for almost a century. She even forgave the past generation of Cobans that kept her prisoner, as she knew it was only because of Tulek. Finally, her escape came when earthquakes on Koba caused the ground to crack open near her pet. At first, she was happy for her escape, but then it quickly vanished when she sensed the suffering and despair of the Koban people from years of plague and famine. She denied her request to return to Coruscant and stayed behind to help rebuild the Koban city the same individuals that had kept her captive. From all of this, it is impressive to say the very least how wise and powerful Yaddle was during her long suffering. The dark side feeds off of suffering, hate, and pain. For a century, Yaddle sat through this darkness while only growing ever closer to the light and this was all while she was just a Jedi learner, Padawan. Her master, by contrast, gave into the dark side within a couple of minutes. Her position in the light was so strong that she not only held firm, even when she had given up all hope of escape, but she found it in her heart to forgive her captors. The next member of Yoda's species that we know of in canon is the child, Grogu. Grogu was 50 years old at the time of the Mandalorian, and apparently had been raised in the Jedi Temple according to Ahsoka Tano. Grogu is like the rest mentioned, exceptionally gifted with the Force, but only seems to use it to help Din Djarin. Because of this, we see the child use the Force from a place of emotion rather than peace. He was able to lift a fully grown Mudhorn, exhibit the rare and difficult ability of Force healing, as well as reuse the Force to return Jetfire. 
These were emotion-based cases in which he was protecting Din or someone else close to him. We do actually get to watch him peek into the dark side a little bit, but when he misunderstands the arm wrestling match between Din and Kara Dune, and ends up force choking Kara. This is the only on-screen example of Yoda's species deliberately using the dark side, but once again, it was not because of a selfish desire, but only a selfless one of trying to protect Din, his father figure. Of course, this doesn't excuse it still from being dark side in nature. Anakin Skywalker was lured to the dark side under pretenses of protecting Padme. But there is a massive difference between using a dark side ability based purely out of emotion and one turning to the dark side. Of all mentions here, Grogu has the most potential for dark side tendencies, as he repeatedly uses the force to hurt people or things to protect those that he loves, and had that emotional goodbye at the very end of the series. Luckily for us, Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy doesn't adhere to the strict dogma of the old Jedi, and he will be able to help Grogu process these emotions properly. Out of the three examples of Yoda's species in canon, however, Grogu shows the most dark side tendencies, but still is very unlikely to actually submit to the dark side. In canon, it doesn't seem impossible for a member of Yoda's species to turn to the dark side, but it still seems unlikely. In Legends though, it's nigh impossible. Moving on to Legends content, there are three members of Yoda's species that are only barely touched upon these members being Master Vandar, Master Oteg, and Jedi Knight Minch. Out of these three, the one we're going to focus on most will be Minch, as his story plays more with dark side concepts. Minch is an interesting case, as it is long debated whether Minch is a younger Yoda as George Lucas's original name for the character, as Yoda was originally going to be named Minch. This is just a theory, however, so today we will be operating under the assumption that he is a different person entirely. Minch was a Jedi Knight that existed during the High Republic era, around 700 BBY, meaning before the Battle of Yavin. Minch was described as fiery in battle and had a bit of an affinity for it. He stands out among other members of Yoda's species because of this factor, and becoming well known for his battle prowess, as the other members of Yoda's species seem more focused on the spiritual gifts of the Force. We are first introduced to the character of Minch when he is in the Bafas system hunting down Bafashi Dark Jedi. Minch went ahead of his group and engaged one of the Dark Jedi in lightsaber combat. Although the battle was fierce, Minch lost the duel. The Dark Jedi would have killed him had it not been for the rest of the Jedi showing up right on time to save the young Minch. Seeing their numbers, the Dark Jedi panicked and killed himself on the spot, as he knew there were too many Jedi for him to fend off on his own. This duel though took a great effect on Minch, as he was not at all proud with how he performed during it. Minch became determined to prove himself to his fellow Jedi in the coming conflict. As you can all guess, this isn't exactly the Jedi way. The Jedi group later tracked down the Dark Jedi Master to the planet of Dagobah. Yes, that Dagobah. Minch's master, to die, warned him explicitly not to go alone in pursuit of the Dark Jedi, not only because of the Dark Jedi himself, but because of the unfriendly and dangerous terrain of the Swamp Planet. Minch deliberately disobeyed, and once more went to engage the leader of the Dark Jedi. Minch crash-landed on Dagobah and tracked the master down to a cave, where there he ordered the Bafashi Jedi to surrender. The Dark Jedi, however, only sneered at Minch, stating that there were always more that could be turned, and that perhaps Minch could be one of them. Minch restated his position as a Jedi Knight, but after another taunt from the Dark Jedi about his anger, Minch attacked him to prove his point. The fight took many turns, but eventually Minch was victorious and dispatched the Jedi and managed to kill him. In his final moments, the Dark Master gloats that Minch had to use the dark side of the Force in order to defeat him. The death, therefore, corrupted the cave into being a place of dwelling full of the dark side. This is the only time we ever explicitly see any member of Yoda's species struggle with their own anger or fear. Minch almost succumbed to the dark side in that battle, and according to the Master, may actually have for a brief moment. However, Minch was later able to reclaim his sanity and his stance in the light side of the Force, exiting that cave as a Jedi. And while this may be the closest example of a member of Yoda's species succumbing to the darkness, still, Jedi Knight Minch prevailed. The final example we're going to be exploring today will be about Grandmaster Yoda himself. There was a meeting between Yoda and Count Dooku where Dooku implored Yoda to join the dark side. 
Yoda was curious and asked a few questions, wondering if it was difficult to access the dark side of the Force, as this is something that in his 900 years Yoda had never done. After Dooku informed him that it was not difficult, Yoda decided to show Dooku what would happen should he ever go to the darkness. For the briefest of moments, Yoda opened himself up to the dark side, and what Dooku saw shocked him to his very core. All 900 years of Jedi training would be weaponized and turned on the galaxy, and Yoda would be far more powerful than Sidious himself. And then, Yoda suppressed it once again. This caused Dooku to wonder if at some point in time that Yoda was trained in the dark side, not fully giving himself over to it, but just out of a sense of curiosity. Yoda's dark side was again explored in the sixth season of Star Wars The Clone Wars, this time taking place in canon, where Yoda goes on a journey of self-discovery that leads him to the Sith homeworld of Korriban. There, he is shown many visions that he has to overcome. He meets with the spirits of the ancient Sith, is tested by the Force Priestesses to give away everything he cares about, and faces his own darker self. Yoda's fight with Dark Yoda is very interesting as we get to see it on screen. What is that actually like? What is it like to hear Yoda's darker self speak with him? The whole time he is challenging Yoda's position in the light. He says to him, Yoda doesn't want to play with me anymore. Yoda thinks me not worthy. That loosely proves that at one time, Yoda did delve into the dark side, if ever just briefly. As they fight, Yoda refuses to recognize his darker half. Dark Yoda taunts him by saying, Don't you recognize what is inside of Yoda? To which Yoda replies, I choose not to give you power. Yoda would go on to win this fight by eventually being forced to admit that he does indeed recognize the dark side. Yoda though says this, Part of me you are but control me you do not. Through patience and training, it is who I control you. In order to do this effectively, he did at one point delve into the darkness, but purely to understand it. As he famously tells Luke, the dark side isn't stronger, just easier. By not taking the easy path, Yoda spent many years strengthening the light side by understanding the dark. So now we return to our original question. Why has none of Yoda's species ever given themselves fully to the dark side? It is worth noting that some species in the galaxy simply have a stronger pull to one side. The Sith species, for example, most notably, had the strongest pull to the dark. In addition to the beings on Dathomir, including the Dathomirian Night Sisters such as Ventress, or the Night Brothers such as Maul and Savage Opress. A species that has a stronger pull to the light side of the Force is the Ethorians. Many Ethorians have become Jedi as their species naturally adheres stronger to the light. This isn't to say though that there has never been an Ethorian on the dark side as Darth Erol was in Sith Legends and was in fact an Ithorian, or that a Dathomirian Knight Brother couldn't become a Jedi. Yoda and other members of his species are not immune to the dark side as some have felt the pull, and maybe even dipped into it ever so slightly. But besides Minch, these times when they did wasn't out of a sense of self-ambition, but from a place of greater good. Another place the answer can be found is in their lifespan. Yoda's species grows at an abnormally slow rate, seeing as of how a 50-year-old specimen is still an infant in Grogu. A good theory is that because of their lifespan, the universe is in a certain perspective to them, a perspective that shows them that they don't need to take a quick and easy path because they have time to spend honing their skill in the right way, the light side. Members of Yoda species aren't even interested in the quick and easy path because they have all the time that they need. Their years give them the advantage of being able to take their time, whereas a century in captivity for anyone else would have spelled doom, to Yaddle it was simply a season of biding her time. She just had to wait and allow the force to guide her mind. For Yoda, he understands that people die even those that he cares about, while he doesn't want to lose them or let them suffer as he tells Anakin. We must rejoice for those who transcend into the Force. More them do not, miss them do not. At this time of him giving this advice, it may have been a bit misplaced or a bit kalaus for a human to adhere to, but for Yoda, he had the freedom to let people go, let them go so that his emotions didn't get the better of him. Yoda's species embody what it is truly like to observe the galaxy the way the Force does, that all life comes and goes. It is precious while it lasts, but the emotions shouldn't last beyond their season. When you're an ancient being, you watch things change all the time, 
You can either get swept up in it and let it drive you mad, or you can learn to enjoy things while they last and move on when they eventually die. Because of this, quick and easy paths to power are no longer a priority. Yoda and his species can identify with the Force more closely. The light side operates much in the same fashion they do, watching time pass around them and being patient enough to know when it is time to act. We can see this perspective whenever Yoda tries to convince Luke to not go to Bespin even though his friends may be dying. Yoda understood the principle of waiting until you were ripe and ready with the Force before going to face your darkness. Yoda know Luke's darkness waited for him at Bespin in the form of Vader. Only a fully trained Jedi Knight with the Force as his ally will conquer Vader and his Emperor. Yoda knew that the younger you were, the more likely it was that you were going to fall to the dark side as mentioned before with Minch and Grogu, two much younger members of Yoda's species. They had pulls towards the dark side during their endeavors to solve their problems as efficiently as possible. This is why the much older members did not fall, because it is likely they understood what it would mean for the galaxy to have an older and more experienced force wielders such as them go to the dark. Like with Dooku, they could see just how truly terrible it would be for their knowledge and power to become a weapon of the dark side. Their species is compassionate despite the Jedi's teachings of emotional detachment. Yaddle, Yoda, and Grogu all have people that they feel love and care for, and thus is the source of their power and the reason they remain so firmly in the light. Well friends, what do you think of this explanation? Do you believe that at one time there was a Sith of Yoda's species in Legends or even in canon that we are currently not aware of? What do you think would have happened if Yoda had decided to give himself over to the dark side during the waning hours of the Clone Wars or during Order 66? We would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. As always my friends, thank you guys so much for watching the channel, may the force be with you and I hope to see you in the next video. Check the link in the description and find your favorite hoodies and tees now.